The law of Nehekara was of course added alongside the Tomb Kings and brings spells for any occasion really. You have augments to make your units into damage dealing powerhouses as well as tanks, hexes to curse the enemy and turn their best units into useless chaff and of course a bit of damage here and there to get that spellcaster some damage value to admire on the post battle screen. It may not be the most out of this world overpowered lore but nevertheless it's still pretty strong and pairs well with the Tomb King experience. And if you haven't guessed already, the only faction that can use this law is the Tomb Kings. First up, as usual, we have the passive of the law, and it's called the Restless Dead. This targets all undead allied units map wide. It restores up to 56 HP per unit and can resurrect dead combatants if all living combatants are at full HP. The living being used in the loosest possible sense here. As I always say, it's a passive, so getting the best use out of it is pretty beside the fact. You want to cast spells when you have the best opportunity for that spell. And the passive is just some added value along the way. That being said, if you really want to milk this for all it's worth, then cast your first spell once most of your units in your army have taken at least some damage. Of course the healing here isn't going to change much, but 56 HP each across 20 units is over a thousand total HP, so it adds up and you may as well take what you can get. Our first castable spell is Jaff's Incantation of Cursed Blades. This is an augment spell, it costs 3 winds of magic and has a 28 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on allied units and has a 200 meter cast range. It provides them with plus 25% to base and armor piercing weapon damage for 25 seconds. Of course this is a spell that only gets more value the higher the initial stats of the unit you use it on are. Casting this on some high tier front lines will get you massive increases to their stats for a tiny price so you want to do just that. Focus on using this on your best front lines damage dealer while they are in combat to make sure they are throwing out the most possible pain onto your enemies. Of course also make sure the target isn't going to get steamrolled by whatever they're fighting in the same time frame otherwise you'll be down a unit and some winds of magic and that never feels good. So use on the best units you have and protect them for the full duration and you won't go too far wrong. The overcast costs 5 winds of magic and adds 16 bonus versus large. This is of course only useful if your target unit is, well, going against something large, and that's honestly all there is to it. If they're against some cav or monsters, then use this overcast. If not, stick to the base cast since this has nothing extra to offer over the original. Next up we have Nehru's Incantation of Protection. This is a ward save spell, costs 6 winds of magic and has a 30 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on allied units and has a cast range of 200 meters. The affected unit gains 40% physical resistance for 18 seconds. This is of course a great spell for making your units way, way, way tougher than they have any right to be as long as you aren't going against any magical damage. If you find an enemy with a lot of magical front lines or spell casters then this isn't going to do anything as that damage will sail right through your defenses. If you're not fighting against magical damage however then yeah your units are going to be rock solid and take 40% less damage from all sources. This can make skeletons into a sturdy line holder or more elite units into an impenetrable wall of bone and steel and a little bit of magic. You want to use this when you want to hold the enemy back for a very long time, so use it on any unit you want and they will keep the enemy back effectively for at least that entire duration. The overcast costs 10 winds of magic and doubles the duration to 36 seconds. This is great for when you want to hold the line for a longer amount of time. Not really much more to it than that to be honest. If you only need a few seconds to get into position, then go for the base cast. Otherwise it can't hurt to hold the enemy back for a little bit longer to make sure you can put all your plans into place. Just be careful when using this so that the rest of your lines don't break while this unit holds firm, otherwise you're hardly going to be keeping the enemy back with a single unit. Next up we have Petra's Incantation of Righteous Smiting. This is an over augment spell, costs 6 winds of magic and has a 43 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on allied missile units and has a 200 meter cast range. The affected unit gains 40% to base and armor piercing missile damage for 32 seconds. Pretty obvious that you want to use this on your missile units when they're able to get nice clean shots off on enemy units. You don't want to do this when they have a chance of hitting your own units since that friendly fire will benefit from all those damage bonuses just as much as if it was hitting the enemy. Aside from a clear shot you also want to make sure that your units aren't going to get flanked or pulled into melee combat or taken out of charge otherwise they obviously can't make the full use of that bonus missile damage and you'll have wasted your wins. As long as you keep them safe and they have a clear shot you'll get some great value and of course you'll only get more with the more elite units you use this on. Those percentage base buffs will only get more value the better the base stats of the targets are. The overcast costs 10 winds of magic and adds plus 40 to the reload skill. Not really any reason not to use this all the time unless your caster is low on winds or HP. That increased reload skill will ensure they keep firing more often with that increased damage and up their damage output substantially. Nothing more to it than that really. Usurian's Incantation of Vengeance is next up. This is a direct damage spell, costs 11 winds of magic and has a 38 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on enemy units and has a 100 meter cast range. It causes direct damage to the target unit entities with a high chance that they will resist. This makes it better versus multiple entities to increase the chance of some of them feeling the pain. They are also hit with minus 25% speed and this all lasts for 24 seconds. 
This is a pretty straightforward spell to use. You have an enemy unit that you want to damage, but it's pretty tough. Use this spell and they'll take some direct damage and be slow moving around as an added bonus. The speed debuff can also help you pin down the target units or make them easy to hit with ranged units if they are otherwise too fast. This can also make the spell useful cast onto fast enemy flanking units to slow them down and give you time to move your units to safety and take out the potential flankers. Whatever you do, just make sure you target multiple NC units to ensure as much damage as possible is going through and isn't going to be resisted by a single NC unit. The overcast costs 15 winds and magic and the target unit now has minus 45% to their speed. That increased speed reduction changes this into a spell you want to use entirely to slow units down and the damage comes secondary. Use this on enemy units going for a flank on your back lines to slow them down and give you a chance to take them out before they can reach you. You can also use this to slow down enemy units trying to run to make them easy to take down and finish before they can make themselves useful. Basically any situation where you want to slow down the enemy, this overcast is what you want. Otherwise, just stick with the base cast since the damage is the exact same either way. Next, we have Sakmet's Incantation of the Skullstorm. This is a Vortex spell, costs 11 Winds of Magic and has a 49 second cooldown. It can only be targeted on the ground and has a 150 meter cast range. It causes major magical damage in a medium forward moving area of effect. This is of course strong versus multiple units and weak versus single entities and has a 27 second duration. As with all Vortex spells, this one is a total dice roll whether it will take out the enemy or go straight into nothing or even worse, your own troops. It could do a huge amount of damage but there's no guarantee. So I'd suggest using caution at all times and only go for this when it is basically guaranteed to get some value. This means using it in the middle of huge groups of enemy units that way, no matter where it moves, it'll be hitting them and not you. It is a lot of wins to waste if you miss, so I would consider it carefully before casting. The overcast costs 17 wins of magic and has an increased area of effect. The increased area, of course, increases the potential damage since it can hit more entities at once while it moves. Of course, this also increases the damage potential it can do to you since it still moves randomly. Only use this when your units are well clear and you have a massive clump of enemy units to drop this on, otherwise you're going to waste wins at best and take out a bunch of your troops at worst. And our final spell is this word, Incantation of Desiccation. This is a hex spell, costs 15 wins of magic and has a 51 second cooldown. It can be targeted on enemy units or directly on the ground and has a 200 meters cast range. Units in the 40 meter area of effect suffer minus 24 to melee attack and defense for 38 seconds. This is an excellent spell for casting on the entire enemy front lines to significantly reduce their damage output as well as their defense to make them easier and less risky to take out in melee combat. These are massive debuffs that can take elite units and give them comparable stats to some peasants. Of course, you'll still need to bring units with damage to get through any armor or resistances the enemy has, but this ensures that whatever damage you're throwing at them is going to land a lot more often and the enemy will hardly be able to strike back. Cast it to hit as many enemy units as you can once the lines clash and take them out as fast as you can to make full use of those effects. The overcast costs 21 wins of magic and now, grants, and now hits affected units with minus 40 to melee attack. This is of course best used against the highest damage outputs on the enemy lines to cripple their chances of even landing a single blow. This is a massive cost for a single spell so make sure you need to use this to avoid damage that you would otherwise not survive. If you're only going against moderate damage, then the base spell should do just fine. Anything more, and you can whip out this to stop them dead in their tracks. That concludes this guide on the law of Nehekara. Let me know what you think of the law in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video by leaving a like or a dislike. And if you want to see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video. If you're feeling a special big penis, then you can support the channel directly, either by becoming a member here on YouTube or a patron on the Patreon. Doing so gets you access to all sorts of goodies, like early access behind the scenes, exclusive voting power and discounts on merch. I'd of course like to thank all supporters of the channel, in particular Henry Tuck of his sports at the officers tier, really can't thank you enough. One more thank you to all supporters, one final thank you for watching and for now, I've been Colonel Damders and I will see you next turn.